You're listening to Two Chunks and a Hunk. Movie musings for mostly everyone. From the shadows we emerge. From the shadows again into the light. Sloughing off our (laughs) binds, stretching our wings to fly and soar in the beautiful blue sky above because the shadows are gone. The strike is over. We can talk about things by name and not dance around all cutesy tootsy. This is Two Chunks and a Hunk, and I am Jordan. I'm Doge. And I'm something, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, you're the chunk, probably, right? You'll Something be chunk like that. this week. Can we talk about this on the air? I'm going to force your hand since we're live on the podcast. Yeah, that's fine. What did it? What did that ever mean? Uh, Nothing. Yeah. All right. That's the just secret. Checking. That's the secret. Just, no, I just thought I'd check. That's my secret. It's always meant nothing. It's always been nothing. I'm Doge, and Chunk Dorella never asked for a prince. She asked for a night off and a dress. Oh yeah, you know. That's I hope good. you teens feel. I hope you teens that are listening feel inspired by that. <laughs> Didn't she do that specifically for a print? That's not even right. You're gonna have to talk to well, Kira Cass about that. Yeah, and I don't know who Kira say, Cass is, but this is their quote. Look, I'm I'm all for empowering the young women who love Cinderella, oh, but let's oh, not for lie sure. About the story. That's what we're most for. That's, yeah, that's like the reason we have a podcast. If you know anything about us, it's that anybody who watches Cinderella, we're like, yeah, you do you. Do you, yeah. girl? Yeah. You I'm do Carter. Do and <laughs> Chunk was my name. It's just like coming back and re- being reborn mm. made me think of Gandalf. Yeah. So used to call me. Like, that was my name. <laughs> it's, it's nice to be back. <laughs> It's very nice to be back. The strike is over. The strike ended soon after we recorded our episode for Castle in the Sky. And so there was a, you know, there was a talking about post recording, like, should we be out of the shadows yet? It's like, no, the spirit of that pod was still well in the shadows. I think it's Uh, also, it's easy to get caught up in the race to be like the first piece of entertainment media to say the strike is over. We just had to give it to everybody else. If we could be the last ones, that's a that's its own distinction. Yeah, it's nice. And it's easy. We kind of stand out. You yeah, know? it's like a Christmas present you get late, like early January, because something mm-hmm. happened in the mail. Yep, the mail was thought more thoughtful than other mail. You know, than being on time. Two Christmases ago, we did a drawing for our like sibling gifts because we didn't want to buy like five gifts a piece, so we just did like yeah. a name draw. And my brother got my name and forgot. So we got there on Christmas morning and Dude, uh, everybody got presents. <laughs> and my brother was like, my brother was like, uh, now you may notice that one's missing. Um, it's coming, it's coming at you. And then I think it was like three months later. Dang. He was like, here you go. But to be fair, his present is hanging above my head right now. It's the it's the leap of faith shot from Into the <laughs> Spider Verse. So it's pretty cool. Pair of socks just balled up, <laughs> yeah. hanging like mistletoe. Just, just, right, I just right put a nail through him right right in the wall. No, he got me a he got me a canvas print of uh, Miles diving upside down into New York yeah. City from Into the Spider Verse. So it's pretty. That's it's cool. pretty tight. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Tight. That's pretty cool. It's cool. It's I'll wait three cool. months for that. Yeah. Uh, the. With the strike being over, it was almost 120 days. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was the longest strike ever. And something that I wanted to do to start our pod in this front half before we talk about Hal's moving castle after the break is do a blind ranking again. Mm. And in this case, 
it's a collection of things. It's trailers that might have dropped or news that might have dropped immediately post-strike. There was a really a massive flood of stuff that came through. Uh, it could be maybe a few things that might have happened before the strike that we weren't able to talk about because it was struck media. It's just going to be a collection of at least 10 uh, specific events uh, that we did not get to talk about on this podcast. We might have talked about it in person, but not on this podcast. If we come across some kind of trailer or something that we haven't seen, we will uh, use some of that podcast magic and uh, make it seen. Mm. Sound fun? Yep. Yes. Uh, if y'all haven't heard Blind Ranking before, y'all being the Chunkies, and I guess my co-hosts here if they don't remember, the Blind Ranking is something that I used to call Blind Draft, and it was wrong. But the Blind Ranking is uh, I have 10 items roughly adjacent to the same kind of theme, and then these boys have to rank it from 1 to 10 uh, on whatever ends up being their scale. I think usually within the first two uh, events presented or characters presented, they have a, these two boys have a conversation about how they will rank. And that's always an interesting thing from the jump. It's actually really interesting because I'm usually like, hey, how are we ranking this? And Jordan says, that's the stupidest question I've ever heard. Yeah, Stop talking is. and There's just contention. rank. There's certainly contention. Because it is. Putting, putting a rubric on it ruins the whole thing. A show that we love here at the beginning of the blind ranking from 1 to 10 uh, that had official confirmation post-strike uh, was the announcement that there will, of course, be uh, The Bear Season 3. Natch. Natch. On 1 to 10, where do you put this bad boy? Did you First of all, did you guys finish Season 2? Yes. How is it better than 1? 1 was right. so good. Season 2 is so good. Um, the final, I would the say, final episode of Season 2 is amazing. It's amazing. I would say this feels like a gimme. Like, it feels pretty obvious to me that The Bear's going to get a Season 3 because it's like probably the best show currently making episodes on TV yeah. right now. Um, so I think I would lean towards like seven on this. Okay. So you're kind of basing it on how surprised am I by this news versus how excited am I by this product? I think it's probably I would, a combination. I would put it at like a, I was thinking like four or five. It's the most like middle of the road. Like I'm not surprised that I'm getting more, but I'm happy that I'm getting more. That's a great point because I think a lot of this news is going to be stuff that it's like, cool. Yeah. So like, I, I'm i not surprised, but I am excited. So like dead yeah. middle, five. I like that. I like that. Let's go five. Moving that to five? Yeah. Yeah. That's I what feel I get good about for that. jumping ahead. That's what I get for jumping ahead. Let me get this. I in feel here. good about that. You just, you wait, baby. We'll get there. Just wait, baby boy. Sweet baby child. My sweet, my sweet angel. Hey, my sweet, hey, sweet angel. Hey, just wait. Angel. Hey, kid. Next sweet up, little we kid. have… Uh, a lot of what happened with the strike, and I went down a rabbit trail reading a bunch of articles on the effects of the strike. And this one is going to have a bit more influence than strikes of the past, is, is a, what a lot of people are assuming, because of how much content was existing or in the process or almost done uh, during this strike. It wasn't like the... Screen Actors Guild decided, let's do it at a convenient time. The point was the inconvenience. And so one thing that's going to happen is the mass move that we saw, very similar to COVID. So I hate saying anything's going to be similar to COVID uh, because, you know, you kind of just want to be done with a season like that in your life. But movies are moving around. And even what I'm going to tell you now in terms of some movies that have new release dates, we know, based off of the COVID stuff— that COVID season that they can keep moving. And something that one yeah. of these articles said, specifically one with Variety, is that ultimately it's up to the studios, right? So if they see, shoot, the summer is jam-packed, uh, we're going to go ahead and move to the fall. Mm -hmm. ah, dang it. They're releasing this in the fall? All right, we're going to be next year. We're going to be the big product for 2025. Uh, so Dune 2, which we've known about forever. We've talked about Dune Maybe since my second year on this podcast, since like yeah. 2019. For sure. Yeah. Dune 2, current release date is March of 2024. It's been done. It's Denis Villeneuve. It's finished. Very likely going to have a release next year. For now, it's in that first quarter of the year in March. That's the news? Yeah. Is, that, is that what we're ranking? That's what we're ranking. Dune 2. Finally getting to see that. Talk about it a little bit. I think I would put it exactly the same way that I feel about the bear, where it's like, 
it's not new. It's just confirming something that I already knew, which is that Dune is happening. Yeah. Um. So, six. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm I'm okay to put it a bit lower because I am more excited about it, but I am more disappointed that I have to wait until next spring for it. Yeah, at least. That was one of the things that I included it, especially especially with some of these like bumped big releases, because that was one of the big bummers selfishly for an acting strike. It's like, sure. well, shoot. Here, we, we've, we've experienced this before a few years ago. It's happening again. Remember Fast 10? Yeah. We knew that that was going to happen for three years, it felt like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I uh, We'll do another one of these. Yeah, six. So the Bear Season 3 is at five. Dune 2 at six. Uh, how about Chris Pratt as Garfield? Ten. The Ten. trailer dropped. Ten. Chris Pratt as Garfield. I'm going to give you all a second to chew on that, though. Remember. Ten. This is… Uh, this is Chris Pratt as ten. This is Chris Pratt as Garfield. Yeah, it's ten. It's probably That'll be ten, ten for me. I think. And going feels like once. maybe ten. Going twice. Wait, hang on. Probably ten. Yeah. What if we put it at ten? Probably about ten. Okay. Yeah, ten. I think probably ten. Chris Pratt as Garfield. Uh, Zach Chris Snyder. Pratt could be on the cover of a magazine called "People I Don't Care About." <laughs> I'm I'm tired of it. Let it be known. I'm tired Strong of statement. It. Andy Strong, Dwyer, all downhill from there. Garfield is an excellent example. Uh, it's a perfect 10 on this list because I am not surprised that Chris Pratt is voicing Garfield and I'm not excited that it's happening. Yeah, I agree. Also, hey, real quick, I do want to say Star-Lord was very good and Star-Lord Guardians was 3 great. was great. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. It was that massive rise that yes. gave him all the things that have exhausted us. And I actually think sure. he's great as Emmett in the Lego movie, as far oh, as like, sure. voice acting yeah, goes. Agree. That's awesome. Decline started that, at Jurassic World. Yeah. I, I don't know who watched the Lego movie and was like, Emmett reminds me of Mario and Garfield. Let's make him be those people too. <laughs> he should be <laughs> both, a great huh? Point. We shouldn't have done it again after Bill Murray was Garfield. That felt appropriate, but there's never it's really perfect. been a Garfield Like when you already have, when you have a fancy. perfect movie, nobody's going to remake The Godfather. So yeah, why are we remaking Garfield? Nobody's going to do that. Uh, Zack Snyder that. always wants to be a part of the news. And so… 11. Uh, Rebel Moon. Under the, the list. The movie that he's got coming out that's got part one. Uh, he's actually going to have a… It's going to have a limited theater release. That's the news. That Rebel Moon isn't yeah. just coming straight to your streaming platform. It's going to be l- uh, limited release in theaters. And now this what is you Zach don't Snyder realize about here. is that if you watch it in theaters, you're an absolute idiot. You have to watch the version Ooh. Zack Snyder cut his himself on his home computer. It's 11 hours long. <laughs> it's in four by three. And it's only available on a VHS tape that you borrow personally from him. And it's so much better. If you watch the studio version, you're compromising his perfect, powerful vision. We stand... Zack Snyder. Uh, nine. Eleven. Under the list. Nine. Fine. <laughs> Do you, are, are you, answer this for me, Doge. You have to. <laughs> okay. It's the contract we made when you gave me your soul five years 100%, ago. hundred percent. I remember mm, I, I signed. about that. I signed it with a pin that pulled my blood out of my body. Are you more excited for Chris Pratt as Garfield or Rebel Moon limited release? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you have to answer this for me. I think Honestly, there's a chance that Rebel Moon is good, and I think there's no chance that Garfield is good. Honestly, exact opposite. I am more, more excited, <laughs> more tolerable of Chris Pratt's presence as Garfield the Lasagna Cat <laughs> than I am of wow. ponderous, up his own butt, Zack Snyder. I'm so wow. over that dude, man. You heard it here first. Over that dude, uh, man. Another trailer. This was the most viewed trailer from this studio on YouTube of all time. Inside Out 2 with Maya Hawk as Anxiety. I haven't watched the trailer. Have you watched the trailer, Jordan? Uh, I haven't. Let's pause and watch it. LOL, most watched trailer of all time. (laughs) We haven't seen it. (laughs) Inside Out 2. Where do we put that? I'm hesitantly it's going to say two. It? Whoa. Here's the thing. I think that Pixar hasn't put out a good movie. What came first, Inside Out or Coco? 
Uh, I, th- I think Coco was first, right? I think Inside Out and Coco were the last two genuinely strong movies for me personally that Pixar put out. You're right. Inside Out was first. You're right. Um, it's been a minute since I've been really impressed by anything Pixar has done. And I feel personally like Pixar, along with many Disney uh, partnerships, is like pretty rapidly declining in quality. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, I think Inside Out is like one of the best Pixar movies ever made. And um, I think that the care that they take in the first movie to be really kind to all the emotions and like yeah. Yeah, acknowledge their importance was really special and something really unique. And uh, as a lifelong anxiety sufferer, uh, I think that uh, I'm very interested to see their take on that particular uh, yeah. set yeah. of struggles. And so I'm tentatively and hesitantly going to say two because I think it's probably going to be awesome. Yeah. I'll follow your lead on that. I am a glass half empty kind of boy. I was, I, I'm leaning. I think if it was just me, I'd put this at a six. Uh, Just because I like. Six is taken I agree. Two, by the way. But. Uh, I put it at a seven then. Uh, I, I'd love Inside Out. I think it's, it's in Pixar's top five, I think of all time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, it is the immediate, immediate red flag to me is the replacement of Bill Hader and Mindy Kaling. They're not back for this. That's not Mindy in the trailer. It's not Bill Hader in the trailer. Uh, and it's just like, man, that immediately makes it feel a little bit direct to Disney. A little bit like how Bryn, uh, directed to home release, like how Brendan Fraser was not in George of the Jungle 2 because that only came out on tape and DVD. <laughs> yes. uh, <laughs> and we all know I love George of the Jungle 1 well, and George no, of the that, Jungle 2 is so a huge disappointment to me. <laughs> that feels like one of the first memories I have of being like, you can't, huh? You can't huh? do this. It's not him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good. What are the reasons I'll I follow to you bring this one up? I'll go two on that one. Fair are enough. we going two or are we going to try and meet in the middle? We can meet in the middle. If, if we've got it. one who says seven and one who says two, what do you want to do? You have one, two, three, four, seven, and eight open right Let's, now. Can I can I convince you of four? I don't care. Okay, let's do four. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I'm not willing to lose any amount of <laughs> emotional fortitude over this. It, it's so. I think it was the variety. It was Hollywood Reporter. I don't know. I, I should if I'm going to give someone a shout out, it better be exactly right. So one of these movie news providers talked about some of the main buckets of issues that will come from the writer's strike. And one of these they think is like, well, what's the silver lining here outside of actors being taken care of, right? The industry has lost a lot of money that it's not going to get back. There's just no mm-hmm. way to catch up. Uh, and so they just kind of have to eat that money and then make their people happy. But one big thing that's going to happen a lot, especially for big studios, and I bring it up with Inside Out because of Disney, obviously, is that there's something that they're calling just like a bit of belt tightening. Uh, some of the overflow of j- the just too much content, it's going to happen a lot with Disney, is they're just going to have to not just put things on hold. It's like a perpetual hold. It's like, we can't do this anymore. Like, we have to be more thoughtful about this. They said it was like this 120 days for some studios. The hope was that a handful of these rooms were just, let's just sit down work on the contract, but also talk about like, where have we been? They had a hard stop to just like reevaluate what they're creating. And so for some people, there's a hope that some of the stuff will get cleaned up. Like how there's just too much yeah. stuff coming out. Like Pixar having, I couldn't believe when Pixar started to have more than one movie a year. I know. And the gap used to be bigger than that, right? Yeah. And so I think that's going to be interesting. But we have Inside Out at two. Uh, there was another announcement. We'll stick with Disney here. And we'll talk about uh, a pretty strong announcement that Pedro Pascal, and this was coming from a lot of different sources. Uh, we'll have to double check on the credibility, but Pedro Pascal pegged to be Mr. Fantastic. This was something yeah. that Marvel Studios yeah. is very much trying to go for. Yeah. Where do y'all put that on this list? And then let's talk about it. It's tough for me um, because I think that it's uh, always a good thing to get Pedro in anything. Um, I think he is very likely why they're doing this. Not only Mm -hmm. golden for the box office, but just a golden human. And I really, I really like him as a person and an actor. 
Um, so uh, to me, it feels like a slam dunk. Where I hesitate is I am, man, so mentally removed from the MCU that I'm like having a hard yeah. time mm-hmm. even getting excited about it. Yeah, I think this for is me, one of the for this one. Let's I would say let's put it under five, below five. I'm thinking seven for this because yeah, let's do seven. I seven feels great. I love Pedro Pascal. I actually think he's pretty wrong for the role of Reed Richards. I don't see him as that at all, uh, especially because Marvel, it feels like they've just gone through a list and asked everybody they could think of and then just <laughs> settled on star power. Because like sure. so many people have been attached to this role, rumored to take this role for such a long time. And the initial casting rumor was that they were going for somebody younger so they could have Reed Richards for several films. And Pedro's over 50. And I, I think like part of yeah. the like the house cleaning, if you want to call it that, at the end of Endgame with... Uh, with RDJ and Chris Evans both being like out, out, and everybody else kind of being backseat, was that, hey, let's get some younger faces in here so this franchise can keep going for a long time. And like if one of our new franchise leads is yeah. over 50, that feels like a, a going back on the vision that we had for this project. Well, Marvel's already like, what if we bring them all back? Would you guys like us again? 100%. That belt tightening yeah. that Carter was talking about absolutely applies to Marvel. They moved a bunch of stuff during this strike. And currently, the last I checked, there was only one Marvel movie releasing next year, which yeah. is crazy for them. Yeah. They've got a, I mean, Marvel was coming up in every single source that I was finding. Like they're yeah. obviously one of the big ones, and, and they have to because they make billions in, of dollars every year. Uh, but I'm excited. Uh, there's also the glass half empty. Um, crew too that just says, well, this is just going to mean at least for the next year or two for a lot of these studios, just a lot more junk. Things that are getting finished in yeah. a strange way when they shouldn't. We've had so many conversations on this podcast about movies that got hurt by the transitions yeah. in production. And there's going to be tons of those. For sure. There's going to be a lot of actors that have to drop out of big projects that they had uh, written in pencil contractually because sorry, I have to finish this. Mm -hmm. If you had something to do with Deadpool 3, man, they were like a month away from being done filming that movie. (laughs) Yeah. So everybody's got to come back and say, well, what's what's my obligation here? What am I contractually bound to? And I got to start saying no to things. Just as much as we hear about uh, Robert De Niro, you know, in the 80s and 90s was asked to play a role and he turned it down for like a million different things, right? Because something else came up with production. It's, it'll be messy for sure. But my hope is things get, cleaned up along the way. But we're putting Pedro at seven. So currently we've got nothing in one, two, three. Four, Inside Out 2. Five, The Bear Season 3. Six, Dune 2. A lot of numbers here. Seven, Pedro as Mr. Fantastic. Eight is open. Nine, Rebel Moon. Ten, Chris Pratt as Garfield. Now to Madame Webb. It was a big trailer that came out recently. Eight. Where do we put that? Eight because nothing lower is open. It's a big boo-boo. Yeah. yeah it's extremely. Here. Uh, we had a great conversation about this last week, but the announcement about Zelda going to be made a movie. Where was that for you? Where would, that, where would you put that on the ranking? We've got one through three now. Should be lower, but three. Yeah, we'll go three. Not much lower. I think middle, somewhere near the middle is about right for me. I'm I'm hesitant because four, two four through six feels action. fine for me. Yeah. Avatar: The Last Airbender. We got to see a full trailer. Trailer looks pretty good. Trailer looked pretty good. Uh, one of my blind spots. Still haven't finished the show. Uh, I've only seen the first season twice, so I need to I need to go back and finish it. But I'm gonna I'm happy to put it at two because simply uh, I know so many people that are very deeply uh, yeah. finally excited about this. So yeah, um, two feels good. Let me be yeah. a black cloud of uh, negativity for a moment. You Netflix you know has how? a Netflix has a uh, observable habit of just pulling the plug on stuff, just canceling stuff. Yeah. So yeah. to everyone who's excited about this, just know. Stranger Things is probably the only Netflix original that's going to get a full series run. This will be canceled on a cliffhanger and you'll be upset about it. And I'll yeah. be sitting here telling you, you know what? I told you it would happen. What a cool way a to be. Um, yeah. I think that 
uh, I think that if you love this, you should love the first season hard, guys. <laughs> love it while it's here, you know? The first and only here. season. That's how I was with Shadow and Bone, which was like pretty Rip. highly produced. Rip. Show. It's, it's done. Pull the plug. Only Rip. two seasons. Season three was finished, dude. Was it really? It was already written. It was finished. And Netflix was just like, actually, no, nah, we're okay. We don't need it. <laughs> Netflix Netflix is so baffling. And it's it's further. You know what's crazy? For, just for a second, I, I want to say. Take it. Take HBO it. has managed to rise, plateau, and then kind of just rise again. Like, yeah, they never really dipped. They rised they they rise just so hard. They rose so hard with <laughs> I rise so hard. And particularly like obviously they were already putting out great content in the in the aughts, but I feel like the early 2010s was like HBO's heyday. And then they stayed pretty consistent in quality through the late 2010s. Yeah. And then I feel like the last four or five years they have just ramped it up yet again. Yeah. And have just proven that they have the the best sense of what's going to be good, the best sense of how to yeah. maintain quality, make something well. Rarely does HBO not finish something they start. Sometimes the production side doesn't finish what they start, but right. rarely does HBO as an entity not finish well. And yeah, um, yeah. at this point, I just think that if, particularly with regards to fantasy and like a a gritty science fantasy, um, uh-huh. If it's not HBO, I'm nervous. Um, mm. Climbing the ranks as far as trust and quality for that type Amazon of show. Prime? Well, I was going to say Apple TV. Apple yeah. TV for me, yeah. Amazon Apple Prime TV. is pretty 50-50 for me. Yeah. Um, they've got great stuff. They've got not so great stuff. But um, the belt tightening of it all, studios are absolutely going to, and they have many of these flagship series for these streaming platforms were some of the first announcements of like, hey, let's get this back on the road. House of the Dragon. Yep. Uh, Stranger Things season five, which it's final scene. They jumped on that so fast. A, because, you know, Millie Bobby Brown is blowing up and it's, I can't even believe that she's been able to do five seasons of this show. And then B, they're, they're, they're adults. Yeah. They're growing. They're literally growing up to like, they, you can't, we lost 120 days of, uh, just development of their childhood. <laughs> did yeah. uh, did you have, have you guys seen the current? Seems pretty concrete rumor of the Last of Us season two casting. Mm-mm. I think I have. Yeah, Caitlin Deaver from Booksmart as Abby. Oh um, no, I hadn't seen that. I like that. Yeah, that's I cool. Do too. I do too. She needs to hit the hit the weights. I think, but uh, hit the old yeah. yim. Yeah. Get up, get up in that Jimothy and uh, see what's going on. But <laughs> uh, our last one, which means it goes Sorry, to number one. From this- muscles, I don't mean. I want to. I want to clarify. We're not being yeah. gross. I just mean that that no. character is uh, oh, well I known to oh, be. I guess people need absolutely yo scrunk scrunk so, jocked. Just need her to just need her to pump some iron. A dog, an absolute dog. Yeah. <laughs> Now I want you to know I'm not trying to say a bitch. No, I'm okay. We got to back up. Back up, back up, back up. <laughs> um, the only time that one, the number one was left on the blind ranking in all of its history of like the four times we've played was Cats because there was an assumption that Lionel hadn't been mentioned yet. So Lionel got correct. that number one spot. Now yeah. we got to, it's a bit more chaotic Yeah, it's going to bum me out. Um, but again, it plays to Jordan. It plays to Jordan here. So there's a big announcement. That uh, in this kind of auditing of what studios have done and what they can do better outside of just taking care of their actors and writers, uh, some movies that had releases are getting name changes because people don't like part twos. So Dead Reckoning is not going to be called that anymore. And that movie will be released next year. But Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning is going to have a new name. Okay. As as alluded to with my Gandalf quote from the beginning, that was my name. That's not my name anymore. Mission they burst Impossible, from the shadows the of the strike and they become something completely different. But it's the number one and there's nothing we can do about it. A few other things that didn't quite make the list but got close. Wait, what's it going to be? No what's the name, name going to be? We don't know. That's the thing. It's a mystery. That deserves to be lower just because there's no detail. Yeah. 
I, I, I would say the same. Sure. But that's not how the cards fell. It's Mission called Impossible. M- Avatar, Mission Impossible. Where is Shelly Miskovich's body, Tom? Where is the body now? Zelda, Inside Out 2, The Bear Season 3, Dune 2, Pedro, Madame Webb, Rebel Moon, Chris Pratt as Garfield. Uh, I didn't mention, uh, it almost made the list, but uh, for those of you who are trying to catch up on all these trailers, the, there's a Mean Girls yeah. trailer. Like Very there's a new... Yeah, very excited for this. It's Tina Fey again. I have it, seen it, the it show. Obviously, would have to be. Yeah, it's the musical. Mean Girls, it's the great. musical, the movie. Um, I'm very excited for it. And yeah. if anything, it's like, is it rated R? No, I don't know. Hmm. I just like when Tina can just let loose. Mm. You know. Yeah. And I think with that, take the chains off of that Tina. crass crew of high schoolers. Man, you should just take the chains. Just, just let them do whatever. I'm let Tina r- let her run. You know. I'm here for it. Uh, something we talked about beforehand, uh, Iron Claw was almost on there. That, was that would have been my number one. Be, yeah, there's going to be, be some biopic news there. There's was so recent good. news that came out. This is just like when we. By the way, if you're going to do a to, biopic, do it like that, like a story that most yeah. people don't know, like an interesting. Well, here's what's funny. Speaking of biopics, uh, early screenings of Napoleon, Joaquin Phoenix's hmm. uh, biopic with Ridley Scott are saying that it is it's watching more like a comedy interesting oh. than anything oh Evidently, on Ridley purpose Ridley Scott is just people think so Ridley Scott tends to hate people in power and so it it's looking like he's just skewering Napoleon the whole time I don't know man that's brave of him finally somebody's yeah. willing to say it finally somebody's willing to say something um, also, the Elon Musk news that there's a Dan Aronofsky biopic about Elon Boo. Musk. 15, 20, Boo. 100. <laughs> What's the biggest number? That's Boo. the number I give it. Don't you think he, it could just be awful? It could make him look bad. Maybe it'll be, be like great. social network. I don't know. But that's it. I think it's tough to, there's gonna, just going to be stuff that just floods in. I think we're going to remember things. It's like, uh, in Born Identity, when he starts to get his memories back, and the, and then he just like would randomly say something in the middle of chasing some dude down between buildings. That's going to happen for us with like movie content, exactly like news. that. We just haven't been able to talk about it on the pod, mm. <laughs> and so if there's something we missed, duh, we can't help that. It's been four months. If there's know. something we something we missed. Stop complaining about it. Stop complaining. Or be thankful about it, for what you got. Gosh. And now we'll have no time to talk about the movie. Let's go to shout announcements. Welcome to Shout Announcements. It's your favorite part of the show. It's the part of the show where we give shout outs and also the part of the show where we make announcements. Shout out to Thanksgiving. Um, That one's coming up. (laughs) That's it. (laughs) Shout out to Thanksgiving. I'm I'm going to give a shout out to Pecan Pie. Two chunks, your pod for the holidays. Give a Mm. shout out to those Sister Schubert's yeast rolls. Mm. I do have an announcement. Is it about Thanksgiving? Because I'm kind of in the middle. I'm cooking right now. Yes. Okay. Is it about Thanksgiving? Don't buy a pre-made green green bean casserole. I don't care who it's from. I don't no, make care your who own. it's from. It's so easy to make. It's so folks. easy. I don't think I even knew that existed. You just slop and plop and blop layers of yeah. stuff. And Who's good? so easy Who's to make? Not making. You're not having to cut anything. I think Costco had it. And Costco has some great pre-made things in this world. If but, Honestly, if there's one place that I would trust to have a good pre-made green bean casserole, it is Costco. But don't do it. Also, it's easy. Uh, if you are not on the Discord yet, that means that $5 tier. Remember, on the $5 tier, you have access to join Box Office That's Ball. True. The announcement, surprise announcement here is that Box Office Ball Season 5 will begin at the beginning of 2024 in January. Obviously, another big thing that came with the strike was, I mean, what are we going to, we're going to try and pick somebody that's in a movie that just came out? Like, <laughs> we're, the monies would have been silly. It would have been the most boring iteration of Box Office Ball today. So, Box yeah. Office Ball Season 5, it'll be back. Love it. Uh, bigger than ever. Very excited. Wow. Very excited. I'm actually really yeah, interested to see the… Drafts in day. <laughs> yeah, it just gets in day. The box office ball, like, drafting strategy has been so, in the past, so reliant on who is in more than one Marvel movie this year. 
that next year with only might one Marvel movie releasing, it's going to actually yep. be interesting. It's not going to be a race to Chris Pratt, although it might because Garfield might do dollars. But yep, I can't even believe that. <laughs> I still can't believe that. I, I have an announcement. Can I go? Sure. Dude, tell me then. Next week, we're going to be watching and talking about Spirited Away. The final, uh, final, final thanks gibbling movie. It's our final opportunity to gibble thanks this Thanksgiving <laughs> season. And we would love it if you would uh, gibble thanks with us. Mm. Tune on in. Tune on in. Tune on in. Well, hi. Y'all just tune well, on hi. in. Well, <laughs> hi. Back to the show. <laughs> Howl's Moving Castle. Let's talk about it. Doug, I need a synopsis before we can discuss. Please. This week's IMDb synopsis was written by Louisa. Young Sophie Hatter, not her name, her job. Young Sophie Hatter is cursed by the witch of the waste. (laughs) Young (laughs) Sophie, it's like a casting call. Sophie Hatter, age 20 to 700. Yeah. (laughs) Young Sophie Hatter is cursed by the witch of the waste and turns into an old hag. (laughs) <laughs> ashamed of how she <laughs> yikes <laughs> ashamed of how she looks she flees into the hills where a moving castle roams the hills it is said to belong to the young and handsome wizard howl who has a bad reputation within the castle sophie befriends sophie befriends the fire demon calcifer who promises to help her become young again one catch she must help calcifer to be free of howl and calcifer cannot tell her how However, Sophie agrees to stay and try to find out about the contract through other ways. Still, Howell can see that Sophie is under a spell like Calcifer can, and he falls in love with her for who she is and not for what she looks like. Sophie manages to bring life to the moving castle, and she helps Howell to face his former tutor. It's not a synopsis. Madam Solomon. That's a summary. It's an absolute Where's Nick? summary. Where's Nick when he's he, in here? He, he, I can he read has Nick. the main one. He has one. I can read it. Are you looking at synopsises? Well, this it was, is my, that's always, mine. You can't. Every movie I check to see if he's the first one mentioned. If yeah, but he's that's the my, one. But that's, I thought that I was think, like. Man, that's my best friend. I thought that was like my thing was to look at him and like. you Like, you, like I thought that was like what people I'm not wanted gonna, me, no, me him, to give, do. Give him his space. Let him, let him pity himself. He'll, <laughs> he'll tucker himself out. <laughs> 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 He'll tuck her himself out. And just, <laughs> just let me cry it out. Just let me cry it out. You got to let him feel okay. his feelings. Let me cry it out. Put me in my crib. Let me cry it out. I'll be fine in just a little bit. Can we talk about the movie, please? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, I had never seen this before, uh, but what I had didn't any of us? realize is... None of us had, yeah. I hadn't. None of us had. Great. Well, what, what I didn't realize is how I knew the song big time. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Big Can I super pump time. right now? Yeah. Sure. I don't it's care. the main theme. That that Howl's Moving Castle, the main theme there. It's a great theme. It is absolutely incredible. The soundtrack to this actually reminded me a lot of Michael Giacchino's work on Up. Uh, oh, dude, for one, sure. That one melody, it's a waltz, just like Married Life is from Up. But it's that one single melody that like repeats uh, probably over a hundred times in this. And like depending on the orchestration and the instrumentation of it and the tempo of it, that one melody can be like whimsical, can be extremely sad, can be like uh, like really uplifting. It's such a versatile melody, such a versatile theme for this. And uh, I think like in, in retrospect for the whole series, Joe Hisaishi could be my super pump. I think the music sure. for each of these is absolutely outstanding. But this in particular, yeah. the merry-go-round of life, Howl's Moving Castle main theme is extremely, extremely good. Sing, that, sing that thing for me. Because I think I'm mixing it. We, I watched Spirited Away like the next day. Oh, I watched them back to back, dude. It's not the. That's no, Spirited that's away, Spirited Away. It? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Through the power of technology, I'll send it in the meeting chat. Extremely good. Extremely easy for me. I think the second I started the movie, I knew that would be my super pump. Yeah, what is it uh, What is it about this song that, that does it for you? It does it for me too, by the way. I really like it. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's what I talked about. It's just so so versatile. It's, it's the rare... To me, I can only think of Married Life from Up, which is like, you know, because if you think of Star Wars uh, or Lord of the Rings as like the, 
the kind of main way to compose for a movie. You've got right. like different themes for every character. You know, you've got the Lord of the Rings. You can hear the ring theme. There's the Hobbit theme. There's the Fellowship theme. Star Wars is very easy. There's like the main theme, the Force theme, the Darth Vader theme. Like it's super iconic, different, like unique hummable melodies that that weave together. Uh, but this and Up both have kind of just that singular theme. It's a really simple melody, but it's a total earworm uh, and it's super, super versatile. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, beautifully written, really catchy and uh, works really well. So I, I, I agree. It's a great it's a great song. Totally worthy, super pumped too. I think that um, yeah. credit where credit is due. This is just, I mean, all like you said, all the music for this whole series has been uh, pretty fantastic. So good. Um, in a way that um, is a ton of fun. Um, I absolutely love this movie. So much. I really, really, really enjoyed Howl's Moving Castle. And something that I'm realizing about Ghibli movies in general, it's tough because even before I started watching any of them, there was this like Pixar comparison, you know, yeah. of like, it's not all necessarily the same universe, but there's some connections and, you know, whatever parallels you want to draw between the two studios. Um, but one thing that I love about Ghibli is, I don't know. So, like, I think Pixar, when they create worlds, they're really tight. Uh, like, I think of, uh, you know, kind of like how things function. We're getting to see the inner workings of a child's mind. Uh, here's what it's like to journey to the land of the yeah. dead. And here's the rules that we have here. Ghibli is really loose about that. And I think a big part of that is Miyazaki kind of lets movies write themselves is what he says, mm -hmm. which would sound super uppity if you weren't good at it most of the time. Yeah. Um, but there's just something about not really knowing what I'm going to see next. What collection of characters. Uh, and with just the overall theme of just different worlds, mm -hmm. of just opening that door, turning that dial, and it's something completely yeah. different. And, and getting to know that. And that does do some good rule following. But I think, I mean, my super pump, I guess I'll call it like a group hug. It's just the whole crew. It's, sure. it's who I would say is traveling. But uh, I'll, I'll even include by the time we get to the end, when we have the Witch of the Waste and that old dog <laughs> yeah. that belongs to… Uh, um, Solomon. Solomon. Uh, just that whole, like, Markle, Howell, Carsifal… Like everybody no. is, uh -uh. Calcifer, Carsiman, <laughs> Calcifer, yeah, Sulfur Cal, Carsiman, Carsiman, Carsiman. yeah, right. Carsiman no. for sure. Jordan waits for that. <laughs> That's his favorite thing. You must be so disappointed so when I don't just fall flat on my face. It is such a bummer when you say things right. I hate it. <laughs> You need to know Calcifer. So the, I love I was Cardamom. Like, I, I love think he's awesome. <laughs> I was as I was watching the movie. I was, as I thought, I love this character, and I, in my head, I'm just like Calcifer, Calcifer, Calcifer. <laughs> How that come work here, for like, Carson in, yeah. Car Carson, Carson, in. Carson in. Yep. Um, their interactions, the voice acting, it sucks because I'm just taking a big sweep of so much of it. But that's how much I love it, this baby. movie. I love the building of kooky characters in terms of like, oh, here's For another sure. one. Oh, here's a new one. Just oh, to get like a, a weird ensemble by yeah. the end of it. And yeah. that's not easy to do. It really isn't. Um, because it can get way too busy sometimes. But this one was just great. They had, I kind of knew this is how they were going to react in that situation. When Markle pulls down, he's this cute little kid. And then he puts on this robe and pulls down that beard. Yeah. Over yeah. so far. Are you kidding? There's so much excellent design. Oh my gosh. Uh, in dude. this movie. But yeah. what a what a wonderfully thoughtful and really creative, creative. The experience. castle I itself it. is unbelievable. Um, the design of the way the magic it, works is so much fun. Yeah, I agree. Like the yeah. world building of this movie is spectacular. The castle kind of reminded me of uh Monty Python cartoons, like when it cuts to <laughs> just like random. If yeah. you've ever seen Monty Python and the Holy Grail, but this would happen all the time on Flying Circus, where it was just absolutely bizarre. But it, it reminded me a little bit of that in the way that it moved around and stuff. But yeah, it was good. I think for its um, sometimes 
there were parts that were hard to follow, but that's when I was starting to really lean into like, that's not really what the studios, this studio is about. Yeah. I don't think it needs to be, well, here's the rules and you have to be able to do this. It gives you kind of a general, it's way more of a playroom, mm-hmm. you know, than a video game. Yeah. Um, totally agreed. Um, I will, I will super pump now as well, just cause we're kind of a little bit on the subject. Um, I loved the cast of characters and the voice cast as well. Yeah. Um, I just thought everything here was really great, but I'm going to zero in specifically on Calcifer and also Billy Crystal, his performance yeah. as Calcifer. Um, I think that Calcifer as a character is uh, super fun, very charming. And um, I love I love a really important side character. Um, and I think he fits the bill perfectly, but Billy Crystal just yeah. breathes life. And first it's of all, it's interesting when someone when they care about what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when voice actors give a crap, hundred <laughs> percent. And uh, something about Billy Crystal being in movies about magical doors that take you to multiple destinations. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's in his contract. Know, yeah. He'll only do those. He loves now. that. But man, I, I just think Billy Crystal has so much charisma that uh, even as a little animated flame guy, he just is stealing yeah. most of the scenes that he is in. And I just maybe I think that Calcifer is a blast. In this movie. Maybe it's a me thing that I have underestimated Billy Crystal, but I was surprised by how little Mike Wazowski I heard in Calcifer. For sure. Only three years oh, after Monsters Incorporated. Yeah, for sure. There was a couple There's, times he, still, he, he was pretty he, Mike. But yeah. yeah. When yeah. he's anxious. Yeah. <laughs> when he's yeah. anxious, he kind of sounds like Mike a little bit. But it was so fun. I think one of my favorite things about Thanksgiving has been, I don't know, uh, the cultural influence of Studio Ghibli has been around me forever. Sure. It just feels like I know someone mm-hmm. or I see some car sticker or something that's Totoro or something like that. But I literally, after saw after I saw Howl's Moving Castle, that next morning I went to go get coffee at a local coffee shop and realized the pin holder at this place has always been uh, Calcifer. It's just this huh. cute little flame. And I was like, hey. Then the girl that was working there was like, can you tell me what this is? I'm like, oh, it's um, it's from a movie. It's called Howl's Moving Castle. I was like, you're not going to believe this. But it just, that stuff's <laughs> but everywhere. But I've seen that like, movie. I feel like I can now partake of that stuff. I'm about to but it was blow great. your mind, lady. This is <laughs> crazy, I've watched dude. that. just saw this movie, dude. Um, I think my favorite voice acting I just knew Billy Crystal was going to sure mm-hmm. be my favorite. And I think now we officially we officially have his entire uh library of voice acting. I think I read somewhere that it was Monsters Inc. and Howl's Moving Castle are the only uh movies he's Which ever is crazy. Been I, voice I feel acting. like he would have done more because he's so good yeah. at it. Uh Gene Simmons as uh-huh. from Kiss. Sophie was phenomenal. I think it's pronounced. Isn't her name pronounced Jean? It is. No, I was being. It is funny, uh, but yeah, Billy. I think, I think she was so good. The, how it's amazing how much she and Emily Mortimer sound like each other. Agreed. That's yeah. really really good casting. Yes, I, I, I found excellent. Grandma Sophie to be unbelievably charming, like unbelievably mm-hmm. charming. Yeah, um, which I know there's, it's because she's a twenty year old, but still. <laughs> so much chutzpah. It's so important. This was the definitely the most personality our lead has ever had. Agreed. Yeah, I think by a long shot, and maybe ever will in in our Ghibli series. It's we've cheated and watched the next movie already, but um, I, I was just so pleased with it. And then obviously Christian Bale uh, as Howl made a lot of sense. Yeah. He had seen Spirited Away. and either reached out to Miyazaki or something, and was like, "Hey, yo, give me a heads up. I'd love to have a role." And voice acting for the next one, and then he was he's made the the main character. So, yeah, he definitely um, does a a pre Batman Begins Batman growly voice whenever yeah, Howl is yeah. the big bird monster. It's true. Yes, <laughs> it's true. Didn't bother me, but it's true. No, not at um, all. Honorable mention for Super Pump is uh, Turnip Head, the Scarecrow Man. Um, <laughs> oh, how sweet yep. was he? So sweet. So sweet. But I do want to talk about uh, something else with Turnip Head, the Scarecrow Man, uh, which is my super dump. Same. Which is the, Same. Final, the final 10 minutes of this movie are what? hogwash. The final 10. The, final, the ending of this movie is absolute 
Garbo <laughs> ridiculousness. Hey, remember when you loved me in my ragtag collection of soul and nobody? Turns out I'm a posh boy with a silver spoon <laughs> who's going to teach you a lesson. It's like, ooh, I don't like the, the movie. <laughs> the like way this, this movie all. ends is that it just throws the e brake and is like, done. This movie, it's finished. over. Stop watching it. Yeah. No more movie to watch. Yeah. So turn it off. <laughs> like, of course they love each other. Of course no one dies. Go home. So <laughs> it was just like <laughs> so <laughs> weird. The ending of this movie sucks. Yeah. This, what, a bu- <laughs> what a bummer. Like the first, the first hour 50, it's like every scene is giving me new life, new reasons to love it, new things to laugh about, new things to explore. And then the final 10 minutes yes. are like, wrap it up. We got places to be. Yep. <laughs> it's yep. so strange, dude. I hated the end of this movie I so think, much. So what if what if the end of the movie was that turnip head scarecrow man dies and then Sophie's like, I guess it really is true that it's not what kind of body you have, but it's the in, what's on the inside that counts. Thank you, turnip head <laughs> scarecrow. And then it ends. That's better than him turning into a prince and being like, actually... I love you. And I'm going to tell my parents to stop the war. <laughs> and I'll be mm-hmm. back to try war again. War is over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was all... That seems to be a Miyazaki theme is like abrupt end to war. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just because, well, okay. <laughs> and war like, No is one done. changes. <laughs> we beat war. It's we over beat, now. Truly, We beat exists. war. We decided, we said we've done it. We like it. Let's do something new. This is one of those rare cases where it's like, Ah. there is no defense of the final 10 minutes of this movie. If anybody's like, actually, I'll explain. No, sorry. The the final 10 movies of this movie suck. But everything else, (laughs) everything else is so good that I almost don't care. Almost don't care. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, Our, it's yeah. it's such a ridiculous way to end a movie. I cannot <laughs> believe that a studio with this much, much pres- prestige was like, that's probably fine. That's this was nominated crazy. for the nominated for the Oscar for Best Animated Feature at the Deserved. 2004 Oscars. It did lose to Finding Nemo. Oh, tough break. Uh, it's tough, tough, right? It's tough. Break, how? It's tough to make an animated movie to come out the same year as Finding Nemo. One of them had an ending. Yeah. Yeah, and one yeah. of them just <laughs> stopped. One of them ended. J- just stopped happening. One of them had an. One of them had an ending for now. <laughs> sure. <laughs> then there was a new ending. Sure. But man, the the cityscapes. Yeah, I think it was a big flex by our animators yeah. here to to just. There were so many different settings and just the way. Gosh. Miyazaki loves himself a blobby, squishy character. The Witch of the Waste walking up those stairs is like, I've never had any better representation in any art form of how I feel after my first workout after the holidays. <laughs> but it's definitely Yeah, that. for sure. It's like, I'm more sweat than man. Yeah. Uh, Something I really appreciate. There's parts of me that are introducing themselves to parts of me that it's much, they're much closer together now than they've been in the past. I haven't seen each other in a while. Um, Something I love about Ghibli movies, about Miyazaki and his sort of like sensibility is that for movies geared towards children, he is completely unafraid to let a moment linger in a way that I really, really like. Um, The Stairs is the perfect example of like, I think there's other worlds, other studios where that's, a 10 second gag and then they move on. But he just lets this moment breathe like the ridiculousness of these two. It feels like 20 minutes long. Yeah. 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 And I think it's fun. I think it's fun that he is so willing in a children's movie to be like, wait, you got to watch. It's funnier if you just let them gasp for air for five minutes. Yeah. There's something about the type of wizard that Howl is that is so much more interesting to me than like a like a Merlin or a Dumbledore. Oh, kind for of, sure. But like the yeah. the wizard that Howl is, is kind of like Doctor Strange, where it's like, welcome to this uh, unknowable, non-Euclidean geometric house where I have a million artifacts that are all some kind of magic. And yeah. it's just so, that's mm-hmm. so interesting to me. I think in D&D mm-hmm. terms, he would be more akin to like a sorcerer than yeah. a wizard because I think he uh-huh. probably rolls his spells using charisma. Um, 
Howell does have that Riz. He's got that Riz. And that's that something riz. that nobody really talks about. He certainly has he's, that Riz. He's really risen out on this movie. Howell's the Riz master. Howell is the Riz master. <laughs> that's what nobody's talking about. Um, Howell invented Riz. More like Rizazaki. More like Mia Rizzi. Uh, more Riz Riz movie Studio castle. Riz, uh, Studio Rizzly. Howell's moving Rizzle. Well, duh. Well, duh. <laughs> moving Rizzle. Howell's Rizzing Castle. Hey, shout out Josh Josh Hutcherson. Hutcherson, I don't want to get too yeah. far without a yeah. You're just a baby boy. Oh yeah, he only had just a little boy. Only had one night at Freddy's at this point in his career. Only one night at Freddy's at that point. Is it now he's got to five. It is Freddy's. Yeah. Huh? That that missed me. It's, that whole trend uh, missed me. Uh huh. I think I'm too old Carsimum? for it. Are we? Carsimum? Is it yeah. I think Carsimum. that's that's one of the first like full on media properties that it's like this is a huge thing. And I just missed it. I'm just too, yeah. I've been too old for it's it like since Zoom. it began. It's like Zoom for Carter. <laughs> <laughs> which which is weird because I feel like the age that loves it is not the Chuck E. Cheese animatronic age. Isn't that weird? Right? Doesn't yeah. it feel like it should be for us who grew up with should the be for animatronics? Us. Yeah. But That's my culture. That's maybe, not theirs. Yeah. Yeah, don't steal it. Maybe what it is is that they were going to Chuck E. Cheese when it got scarier because people weren't going. That's anymore. it. Yeah, because Chuck E. Cheese yeah. was still kind of nice. Like the the robots didn't feel murdery at all. It's like, ooh, okay, this is ooh. nice. What? Sometimes oh, I think about when you walk in Chuck e. dinner Cheese pizza. and a show. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. What did you say? Jordan? In my memory, Chuck E. Cheese pizza is the greatest pizza to ever exist, and I know that it is not. But in my memory, it's a big it's like I could I could walk to a Chuck E. Cheese from my house, and there have been so many times that I have almost gone and bought a pizza out of curiosity more than anything else. Because I just is you. it still cheese? Let's, I remember. Let's buy a Chuck E. Cheese pizza pretty soon. Then I'll do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna tie this back to the movie. If that wasn't obvious yet, hang but on Chuck though. E. Hang does on. Does have a lot to do with Howl's Movie Castle. Go ahead. I do have a question though. It, can we, as a group of adults, can we have a birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese? Ooh. Would they let us? Like, if the three of us were I don't know like, about all that. hey, we've been a podcast for six years. Let's have our podcast birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese. Would they let us? I'm is sure. that creepy? I'm sure they would. Hey, big would dog. Would the parents is, of the? But I'm sure they would. Good news. Would Chuck the parents e. of the kids DoorDash. there? <laughs> I'm a DoorDash of Chuck E. Cheese. Does the rat deliver it? Does it deliver a robot rat? And he sings you a song at your door. Chuck Entertainment. Chuck E. Cheese is very much on DoorDash <laughs> and pretty affordable. How much is a pizza? I mean, How much imagine. is like a big pepperoni pizza? Um, let's find out. So if we were to grab a PP Rones. Oh, that's expensive. What? <laughs> Are they massive? <laughs> that is a $25 large pizza. Oh my gosh. What? It must be large. It must be quite large. It also comes with a show. So that's yeah, what you're paying for. Absolutely. Carton four or five. Dude, I'll just go uh, pick it up then there. if it's going to be that expensive. Yeah. Uh, I would imagine that walking into Howl's Moving Castle, that that strange uh, mix-up of it looking smaller and then you go inside and it looks much larger from the inside is like how I was as a kid at Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. Like this is just, this looks like a warehouse, but then I walked in and the ceilings were like 100 feet tall. Bottomless potential for enjoyment. Bottomless potential. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm so distracted with Chuck E. Cheese on DoorDash. That's fine. They have an app sampler. <laughs> Can someone explain to me, Sophie's, Sophie changed a lot. Uh -huh. And I don't know how much it was explained. Can you explain that to me? So I, did, you, did you catch something I missed? I looked it up and there are two conflicting, like some, some people say that Sophie. When she's starting to have affection, she gets younger. Right. Some people say as she's okay. aware, as her awareness of her love for Howl increases, she becomes younger, more like her true form, I guess. Uh, others have said when she's acting like a young person, she becomes young. And when she's acting like an older person, she becomes older. I don't older. think it's that because I think she acts young quite a bit as an old lady. Some people have said she is as old as she feels like she is in the moment. There's I not really that. a clear interpretation. It's much clearer, <laughs> apparently, in the novel that this is based on because this is pretty different than the book. Uh 
But yeah. Can I give you my read on it before we rate? Yeah, sure. So my sort of read on it, I also thought that was a little nonsensical, but so is the whole movie. So who cares? I mean, that's whatever. But I thought that would bug you more as a rules boy. There's like rules for magic systems. I think when you establish rules and then don't follow them or break them in a stupid way, I'm bothered. If you don't really establish rules, then whatever. Um, Yeah. It doesn't. It can't be bothered if there's no rules to follow. But my my sort of read on it, I think, like baseball. Well, it's just like (laughs) baseball. I think my sort of read on it was that as she, so like I think as an older woman, she gained a lot of confidence that the younger Sophie didn't have, and as the younger Sophie, she had a lot more life left to live. I think she sort of ends up meeting in the middle where she stays young but keeps the gray hair of sort of the wizened older woman who realizes that she's not, because she has this obsession with like, I'm not pretty. I'm not worth attention. And so I think as she gets older and she realizes that she still feels like herself, even though she's as old as can possibly be in the whole world, that she understands that like, there's more to her than what she looks like on the outside. So then, oops, so embarrassing. There's more to her than what she looks like on the outside. And so I kind of read it as she keeps the gray hair of old Sophie because it represents sort of the new confidence that she's found in herself. Ahead of her time, by the way. Um, Ahead of her time. It's true. Um, but Dying your hair grays. It's in. She kind of changes back to young Sophie because of love. Miyazaki has this thing where like love breaks spells. Um, and I, I feel like that was well, kind of my... Everybody's got that. My read on it. Because it's true. Um, shall it we rate this movie? Well, yes, yes. I'm going to use the scientific cinema scale, which is perfect. And as follows, the best thing we could ever say about a movie is own it, don't lend it, buy Buy that that poster. poster. The next best thing is buy it. That's followed by rent it and then stream it. After that is forget it. And last but certainly least, the worst thing we could ever say about a movie. God God hath forsaken forsaken us. us. When I found out that Miyazaki just kind of lets the storyboards write the movie, He's like, I just draw something and then we make a movie from that. Mm -hmm. The bad side is you get the last 10 minutes of this movie Mm -hmm. (laughs) probably from that. But I think if he was, it feels like his approach to making these movies is just kind of like a painter. And it can go abstract at times, but I think like in the gallery of Studio Ghibli, so far, Howl's Moving Castle is the one that I'm hoping there's a bench in front of it so I can just sit down and just kind of soak it up. It's just doing things I haven't seen before. And overall, I'm not going to let those last 10 minutes change my opinion overall about this movie. So I I buy the poster. I loved Howl's Moving Castle. I really, really enjoyed it. It's great. I think I'll buy it. Uh, I also really, really loved it. Um, It was a ton of fun. I, I think I'm still trying to catch up to the high that I felt with Princess Mononoke, the beginning of this Thanksgiving season. Uh, but yeah, this the is movie that I've, barely made the cut for us has been my favorite so far. Yeah, it's been very yeah. good. It's a buy for me, Howl's Movie Castle. I tiptoed up to a poster. I was so close, genuinely. But I, unlike Carter, am going to let the final 10 minutes change my opinion. Um, I Just because I think it was that bad. Um, I think it's a great, great movie. I think it's beautiful. The soundtrack's amazing. This voice acting is so much fun. I think it's a blast. And... Um, so close to a poster for me. Um, but I really closer. I really <laughs> hated the last 10 minutes of it. So it's tough. Uh, I am gonna keep Big it bummer. at a buy for me because it's just like the the ending of this movie was so odd and out of place to me. It just does not work even a little bit. And uh that's gonna keep it at a buy for me, which is still great, man. I loved this. I thought <laughs> yeah. it was such a good movie. Um, so uh thank you for voting for this movie because I'm really thankful we got to watch it. I'm Thanksgiving. Now it is there. it is time to rate this movie according to the Chili's meter, which is perfect and as follows. Is this movie <laughs> better or worse than going to Chili's? Uh this movie's better than going to Chili's. Better. Better than going to Chili's. Okay, cool. Better. Yeah. How hungry am that I? That one's that one's way easier. How hungry are you? Completely. I'm I'm 100 percent hungry. Maximum was, capacity hungry. I was talking Full about hungry for the rating scale, but I was just being a silly. Uh, I am oh, starving okay. right now, though. Yeah, I was about to say I haven't had breakfast today. I'm extremely hungry. Yeah. No brekkie. No brekkie. And there you have it. How's Moving Castle? Make sure you uh 
pull your family close, hug them tight, and tell them you love them for Thanksgiving. If you're like that with your family. If you're not like that with your family, forget about them. Hang out with your friends. Who cares? Forget about them. Uh, and next week, join us as we discuss the final movie in our Thanksgiving series, voted on by you and most of the world also, as uh, the, the last most one that we should watch, Spirited Away. So make sure you check that out. Out To end today's episode, I'd like for each of us to say our name and honest to goodness, be real with yourself. How many slices of Chuck E. Cheese pizza could you polish off right now? For real. Be for real. Don't joke. Be honest. For two chunks and a hunk, my name is Jordan Wonders. Honest to God, like nine. (laughs) I'm Doge, and those who know me or have perhaps uh, partaken of a slice of PD in my presence— Know that I have a bottomless pizza tummy. I've watched you polish be, off an entire pizza and then ask if anybody has slices left. I can be completely full, not hungry at all, finished a, a regular meal. And then pizza enters the equation and suddenly I have tons of room. I, I think that, mm. honestly, in the spirit of the Mean Girls musical, the limit does not exist for me. I don't think I can give you an answer for that. Fair I think I think as many as there are. Infinite. As many until it's gone. Uh, I'm Carter and I'm 35. And <laughs> as I'm halfway to 70, oh, I was that's just such like, a horrible man, way to look at things. <laughs> I, I look at this body and I'm like, okay, we gotta, there's still a chance here. Let's take care of it and let's ride that. So, unfortunately, something that's happened with just the way I eat now and the way I live is I legitimately think my my tummy has shrunk a bit. And I've been disappointed when I've just listened to my body and was like, well, I'm full and there's half of this left. What do I do? Just burn money? What am I doing? <laughs> um, I Four. And I think it would be hard for me to do five. I would want to do five. But four is, a, is legitimately all I could do, I think, right now. And it makes me so sad. <laughs> Can we? <laughs> I've changed. It's like you're different, man. Sure, sure. Your joints start aching when it's cold outside. You can't really be as active as you used to. Your back gets stiff. They don't ever tell you about how, man. It's pizza just tummy hard shrinks. to eat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> My pizza tummy shrink. Can we decide as a group can't right now? It. We we've been talking a lot about uh, like trying to get together and, and planning out 2024 for the pod. Can we decide right now that we? To get our creative juices flowing, we need to get our tummy juices flowing with a Chuck E. Cheese pizza. I'm I'm just so sure. like morbidly yeah. curious what it tastes like. As long as we don't I would have love to that. go be at Chuck E. Cheese, I just don't think I can be comfortable <laughs> existing in that building. <laughs> what if, What if we try to look younger? Like if I get you a hat with like a propeller on it. Here's what it's, we can it's do. It's getting worse. Because when it, something I've realized is a pizza slice is essentially the charcuterie board of sauces. You can put so many sauces on pizza. Sure. Huh. Let's order some pizzas and also bring our favorite sauces. I right? love it. Yeah. Okay. And just pass around and be like, try it with this. Try it with that. Yeah. That's this. really great. See, totally down. See if this makes the Chuck E. Cheese pizza good. Maybe this will help it. <laughs> Doge, do you want to host <laughs> since we live literally walking distance from a Chuck E. Cheese? Only if we'll walk to pick it up. Oh, God. Okay. All right. I've already talked about how I need to prime these. I've got a. My body's got to move. Depending we got to burn some weather, pizza space. Depending on the weather, that pizza is not going to be great eating temp by the time we get it Jordan, home. Jordan, <laughs> what he's not saying is he legally can't. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying. He's trying to like. Yeah, I gotta stay. I gotta stay. I don't know, man. I don't know if Chuck I could cheese. even get within a hundred feet of a Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> I got. I, there, I'm not, dude, I'll, I'll stop here. There is something in me that feels like it is illegal for an adult to walk into Chuck E. Cheese without a kid. It does not feel like it's okay. You've just got this boundary, this spiritual boundary you can't pass, and we just move Maybe on. Maybe they have curb me. curbside. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I guess Chuck E. Cheese is how you get clicks for this week, which is strange. <laughs> <laughs>